what is going on youtube welcome my name is galley and in today's video we are going to learn how to survive a zombie apocalypse now i'm a huge walking dead fan i'm a huge zombies fan i love zombies i love the concept of zombies uh if you think a zombie ap apocalypse will ever happen in the future now Leave that in the comment section down below. Let me know what is your theories. And let me know what is your top three weapon choices for a zombie apocalypse. Or what you would do to survive a zombie apocalypse. Leave that in the comment section down below. And without further ado, ladies and gentlemen. Link to the original video is in the description down below. Let's get to it. It's the top 10 tips to survive a zombie apocalypse. And let's go. Hi everyone. Well, we're sure today everyone is more or less familiar with the concept of a zombie apocalypse. Yeah, you know, everyone goes nuts, your friends turn into monsters and want to eat human brains or, well, any kind of meat. It might sound a little crazy, but nowadays a scientific mistake can allow anything to happen. So it doesn't really matter if you believe in the Walking Dead invasion, because we already prepared a survival manual that'll help you to stay alive. Let's get it on. hiding place. So the zombies are here. It might look like it's going to end pretty badly, but not today. So stop freaking out and start thinking. If you're in an apartment, first you should build a barricade, because even if you live on the eighth floor or higher, that doesn't mean you're safe. Put an increased focus on the front door and any neighbors that may enter your house without knocking. Take all the furniture you have. You won't need your favorite armchair, table, and chairs anymore. After you reinforced your shelter, try turning on the TV or the radio. The government has probably created several safety zones that The Walking Dead still didn't take over. Don't forget about your friends and family and try to call them as well. If I wonder if the government has actually planned for something like this. If you guys have that theory, leave that in the comment section down below because my theory is that they do have something planned if this ever happened. But, you know, that's just my opinion. But who knows? Who, who knows what the government might have? If they're still alive, there's a chance you could get together and it could be much easier to survive this way. If there are doctors among them, try to contact them first because in times of zombie apocalypse, they are extremely valuable. But if your loved ones don't pick up the phone or if you hear some weird chewing on the other end, you have to deal with it and realize you've got to get out of it by yourself. Clothes. If you used to be a rock and roll fan, or if you still are, you're very Those lucky are because this kind of clothing is the best for this occasion. To be a leather jacket and leather gloves can provide a great protection since they're very hard to bite through. Also, don't forget about mm. the shoes. Boots or sneakers are perfect for this because they're strong, practical, and comfortable. Besides, it's really easy to run wearing them and this is the most important. If you've ever done some extreme sports and you have protection, put it all on you. It'll increase your chance of surviving. And remember, zombies love summer, so don't put your favorite sweater on. Yes, we know it's really hot in leather boots and a jacket, but they can save you from becoming a zombie's meal, so don't underestimate them. Food. Now it's time to think what you're going to eat when you leave the shelter. The most important principle during a zombie invasion is more carbohydrates and protein. It may sound like a typical advice for a bodybuilder, but actually it can help you survive with a small amount of food. Look in the fridge. If there's some food enough for a couple of days, then great. If there's only cookies and some oldy yogurts, you'll probably have to walk to a deserted supermarket. Mm -hmm. First, start looking for canned goods, cereal, pasta, nuts, and dried fruits, or well, anything that you can keep for at least a week without a fridge and don't forget about water also while we're talking about liquids you should also take a couple of bottles of alcohol the stronger the better no it's not what you're thinking alcoholic drinks can come in handy if you need to clean a wound or burn uh -huh. a zombie are you scared to come out of your house then try to visit your neighbors but first make sure there are no drooling zombies outside your door first aid kit Food, water, and clothes. Looks like we've covered everything, but it only... To be honest, the first aid kit and med kit will be my first priority. Then probably clothes, then probably food. Some people might say food may be the second choice, but first aid kit will always be my major priority. Number one. Number one. 
It looks like that because actually in these kind of circumstances you can't do without medicine. Are you wondering what you should take? Well, grab everything. Well, not really everything, of course. You obviously mustn't fill your bag with vitamins and cough syrup. Pills for headache, antibiotics and painkillers are your best friends in the time of a zombie apocalypse. Also take a look at your neighbor's first aid kit, especially if you have some grandmas living nearby. They usually have a lot of medicine. And don't forget about the simplest things as well, like bandages and iodine. Of course they won't help if you've been bitten, but they can save you from blood poisoning if you step on a rusty nail or something like that for stomach disorders. It won't be cool if you have to face the walking dead while sitting on a toilet. That will Weapon. suck. Ta and now it's time. Taking a shit and then you just, all of a sudden you get bit or yeah, you get bit by a zombie and a herd of zombies start coming while you're taking a shit. That, that will be the worst. Be the worst. Time to uncover your gun. It would be perfect if it were an automatic gun or a rifle. Oh wait, sorry. Probably most of you don't even have weapons in your houses. Well, cleavers and meat knives can replace them. They're the most solid and useful instruments to crush a zombie's skull. Oh, what? You don't have any? Then look in the toolbox. A drill is probably not the best idea, but a hammer or an axe would be perfect. Although there are a couple of things you should remember. These tools are not easy to take out of the head of the walking dead. If you're not sure you're strong enough to fight using these tools, we recommend you to visit a gun shop or even better, a hunting store. When choosing a weapon, forget about shotguns. If you use one, the blowback will throw you right into the mouth of a hungry zombie. And while you're reloading, the Walking Dead can learn a couple of recipes on how to cook human meat. If you're in the right place, take a look at choppers, machetes, and hunting rifles. If you haven't found anything, you're probably in a hardware store. In that case, at least take a shovel. Mm -hmm. Fighting Basics now you're ready for the fight, and we're going to tell you how and where you're supposed to hit. The first rule of Zombie Fight Club, you must aim at the head because it's the most vulnerable part. Keep Walking in mind that you're dealing with that. the dead, so their body tissues are not that strong as the ones of a living person. So an accurate punch in the head with some sharp or blunt object will kill the monster, or at least make them fall to the ground, which is enough for you to run away. If you chose a firearm, don't waste the bullets shooting at the body. Better aim for the limbs, this way you can slow down the walking dead. And by the way, it's quite easy to take down one zombie, but when there's a whole bunch of them, they can easily surround you and attack you, especially in a city. Remember that there's no antidote for a zombie bite. If you're bitten, you'll become a zombie yourself in a few hours, and your lifeless body will start strolling about the streets looking for food. So if you don't want to become one of those, we recommend you to always stay armed and keep your eyes open. Movement now let's talk about how not to get caught and bitten. Before going out, examine the streets. What kinds of groups are walking on them and how the lonely zombies move around? Try to think through how you can distract them and get as fast as possible from point A to point, nobody will bite me here. If possible, try to move on roofs and fences. We know that you have a lot of stuff, but still it's gonna be much harder for the dead to get you if you're on the rooftop. When you're outside, what you need first is a car. It'd be perfect if you could find a four x four car with a full tank. Mm -hmm. If it's empty, you'll have to borrow some fuel from abandoned cars for now, and then you can refill the tank as usual at a gas station. Finding the perfect house. If you manage to pull perfect that off house. without getting eaten, you need it's time to get house. out of the city. First, you have to choose a destination. We recommend you to choose some small town or village with a good infrastructure. By the way, if you think it's better to travel at night, you couldn't be more wrong. At night, as weird as it might sound, you should actually sleep and rest. Driving in the dark increases the chances of falling asleep at the wheel and having an accident. Also, it's much harder to see any danger on the road when it's dark outside. If the worst happens and you wake up in your car surrounded by the walking dead, don't panic. Start the engine and go really slowly through them. Remember that the glass of a vehicle is really solid and the zombies won't be able to get to you. Once you reach your destination, you should immediately find a proper building for you to live in. So, have you? When you find something worthwhile, you should scout out the surroundings. Come as close as possible to the building and honk a few times. This way you can attract all the zombies around and lure them out into the open, where you can deal with them using your tools and weapons. When you're done, it's time to protect your shelter from the dead. Block all the windows from both sides. You can disassemble some furniture for this purpose. You'll also have to secure the front door with fastenings and padlocks. All right, now you can finally unload your car and take a good rest. Looking for survivors. 
As you might have guessed already, there's nothing worse than fighting a bunch of zombies alone, so you must create a team, which means you have to look for other survivors. First, you have to come up with a special signal. It has to be bright and big so anyone could see it from a distance. If the miracle happens and someone does notice you, first make sure that it's a real living person and not some zombie in disguise, all right? Then keep looking until you assemble a team of 10 or 20 survivors. Now it's time for some really heroic deeds. Imagine you're some kind of Justice League and your goal is to save the city from the walking dead. So supply the people you find with weapons, refill their food and water supplies, find more transport means and you can start searching for other living creatures. Visual Aid and now here we have the ultimate survival advice, and it combines everything we've told you up to this point. Google up the most famous zombie apocalypse movies, and then watch them all. Maybe even a few times so you won't forget anything. And then a few times more. And then again. Well, you get the idea. We think that movies like 28 Days Later or Shaun of the Dead would be perfect. Or if you prefer independent classics, then don't forget about Night of the Living Dead by George Romero. Although if you don't want to waste your time searching for certain tips among all the action, you can watch Zombieland. Jesse Eisenberg's character explains all the rules, literally one by one. There's also The Walking Dead, but we don't think that's the best idea. The apocalypse will probably start before the series finally ends. If you guys enjoyed that and you got some valid information on how to survive a zombie apocalypse, let me know in the comment section down below or tweet me on Twitter or follow me on Twitter. That Whatever you guys want to do, also leave a like. And again, leave in the comment section down below who you want in your team or what you would do in a zombie apocalypse. Me, I would do what is best for me in a zombie apocalypse. What's what's best for me and my family in a zombie apocalypse. But that's all the time in the world we have here today. My name is Gally, and I will see you folks later. I'm out. Peace.